Good morning, children. Myself, Fani Kumar, uh, PGT Chemistry. So, I welcome all of you to Boyan Study Circle. So, I would like to discuss some important topics of physical science of 10th class. So, today our topic is structure of atom. Our topic is structure of atom. So, as we want to recapitulate this knowledge about atom from our ninth class, we have already studied in what is inside atom and matter around us. You know that matter is made up of large number of tiny particles and these tiny particles are called atoms. That means, the simplest particles of the matter are atoms, you know that. And according to Dalton's atomic theory, atom is not divided. That means, the name itself atom, when you learn the atom, this is derived from A plus Tommy O. So, A means not, Tommy O means cuttable. So, the name itself derived from the the word atom is derived from atomio which is not cuttable, but further studies reveals that atom can also be divided and there are some simple particles inside the atom. So, they are called subatomic particles, subatomic particles. So, these subatomic particles already you know that they are pen. Uh, this is the word to remember the subatomic particles proton, electron and neutron. Okay. So, some of the fundamentals we have to recapitulate from our ninth class syllabus, right. So, that is if you want to recapitulate. So, these are the topics to re uh, recapitulate serial number and that is the fundamental particle or subatomic particle and scientist invented and the charge associated with that and then the symbol with which it is shown right. So, as per the history as per the uh, invention we are going uh, forward the first subatomic particle invented is electron. Chalan can you name the scientist who invented electron? Yes, as you said it is J. J. Thomson right. So, J. J. Thomson invented the electron and already you know that the charge associated with the electron is negative and usually you designate the electron with letter E and the second invented the subatomic particle is proton and the scientist associated or the scientist invented the proton is Goldstein and it is it is associated with the positive charge and it is usually shown with the letter P right. And the third subatomic particle that is neutron and the scientist invented is Chadwick and the name itself shows that neutron. So, neutral that means it is not associated with any charge or its charge is 0 that is why it is neutral and it is shown with N right. So, these are the subatomic particles and the some important uh, properties of those subatomic particles and then the model that is atomic model right, atomic model right. So, what is atomic model? What is atomic model? So, usually in our biology or our biology teacher says that you can prepare the uh, heart model, kidney model or some extra. So, some sometimes you prepare the models. So, that means, by preparing the model of kidney that means, you can explain the structure of kidney. So, by preparing the model of heart you can explain the structure of heart. In the same way this atomic model explains the arrangement of subatomic particles what we have discussed earlier that is proton, electron, neutron. 
how they are arranged inside the atom, what is their address, what is their exact position inside the atom. So, that will be explained by the atomic model, right. So, uh, now you can answer this atomic model. So, what is atomic model? The model which explains the arrangement of subatomic particles inside the atom, right. So, the first atomic model proposed by J. J. Thomson, the first atomic model proposed by J. J. Thomson and this model is also called water Milan model, water Milan model right, right. So, at the time of J. J. Thomson only electrons were discovered, he, he himself invented the electrons right and no neutrons were discovered, no protons were discovered, only electrons were discovered, but atom is electrically neutral, you know that the atom is electrically neutral. So, if there are negative charges. Uh, which were invented by himself, there should be some positive charge, then only the atom will become neutral. So, that is why he assumed that some positive charge is inside the atom. So, he assumed that the positive charge of the atom is located all over the atom and the electrons are embedded inside the positive charge. Children see at this structure, it just look like the water mila, right. So, as you uh, when you cut the watermelon, you see the red color pulp inside the watermelon and sometimes and, and the seeds are located or embedded inside the watermelon. So, in the same way I assumed the uh, existence of positive and negative charges. So, when compared to watermelon, so that is why this model is also called watermelon model, but it is just assumption, but there is no practical proof for this right. And the second model proposed is Rutherford model right Rutherford model. So, this is also called planetary model planetary model planetary model right. <coughs> so, Rutherford as the student of Thomson. So, he wants to prove experimentally the model of Thomson right. So, for that he conducted an experiment that is alpha ray scattering experiment or gold foil experiment, alpha ray scattering experiment or gold foil experiment right. So, before doing experiment, we got some hypothesis that whenever as Thomson said, if positive charge is located all over the atoms. And when alpha rays are made to interact or made to struck the atom, you know that alpha rays are positively charged and the atom is positively charged and when positive charge strikes the positive charge definitely that will be reflected or deflected or repulsed. That is why he assumed that all the alpha rays which hits the atom will get deflected back. Okay will get deflected back. This is his assumption or hypothesis, but after experiment the surprising results came out that most of the alpha particles passed through the atom without any deviation more than 90 percent of the alpha particles straight pass straightly through the atom. This means that nothing disturbs or destructs the path of the alpha rays. So, nothing obstruct the path of the alpha rays. So, that is why they move straightly without any deviation. That means, you came to know that there is no positive charge in the path of alpha rays, but some of the alpha particles which are moving through the center, they only got deflected. That means, the positive charge obstruct the path of the alpha rays which were passing through the center, right. So, that means, the positive charge is located only at the center not all over the atom. So, this is exactly opposite to the assumption proposed by the Thomson right. So, now we come to know that the positive charge is not located all over the atom, positive charge is located only at the center of atom. So, this center is named as nucleus. So, now who invented the nucleus? Rutherford invented the nucleus by alpha ray scattering experiment for this he got the Nobel prize right. Both the teacher and the student got the Nobel prize 
for their work, right? So, apart from this, he said that. So now you know that the positive charge is located at the center, and the center is called nucleus. So now electrons are revolving this nucleus around the nucleus in circular paths or circular orbits, right? So just it looks like the planets are revolving around the sun. Okay, so that's why this model is called planetary model, right? So what are the postulates of Rutherford's model? So according to the experiment, the atom is 90 percent or the maximum part of the atom is empty and the positive charge is located at the center of the atom. This positive charge location at the center of the atom is called nucleus and the electrons are revolving around the nucleus in circular paths as the planets revolving around the sun. So, that is why this is called planetary model, but whenever you come across or whenever you are observing the particle which is circulating in the circular paths, it should lose energy continuously and finally, it should collapse or it should fall into the center. In the same way, the electron whenever it is rotating or revolving circularly around the nucleus, so it should lose continuously energy and finally, fall into the nucleus, the atom should be collapsed, but atom is stable. So, this stability of atom could not explain by Rutherford. So, this is the main drawback. So, for this explanation of the drawback of the Rutherford, the next model came into force that is Bohr's atomic model. Bohr's atomic model, right. So, in Bohr's atomic model, when you observe the Bohr's atomic model, he said that electrons revolve around the nucleus in circular paths called orbits or energy levels, energy levels. So, as usual according to the Rutherford, the electrons are revolving around the nucleus in circular paths. He named these circular paths as orbits or energy levels. The term itself indicates energy levels. That means, each orbit is associated with some amount of energy. So, that means, electrons when revolving in those orbits or those energy levels, they are also associated with that amount of energy. Okay. So, number 2. So, these energy levels are with fixed energy that means their energy is fixed or their energy is quantized. So, they are having fixed amount of energy each energy level or each orbit is associated with the fixed amount of energy. So, these orbits are called stationary orbits. So, by this postulates by put forwarding the stationary orbits concept he can explain the stability of the atom whenever the electrons are revolving in these stationary orbits they neither lose energy nor gain energy. That means, they are moving with a stable energy. That is why the atom is stable. That means, electrons are not losing energy, not gaining energy. That is why atom is said to be stable, right. So, these orbits are numbered 1, 2, 3, 4, so on are K, L, M, N and so on, right. So, when you say that uh, first orbit that means first energy level, second energy level, third energy level, fourth energy level like that K shell, L shell, M shell and N shell. When you say K shell means it is first energy level, L shell means second energy level, M shell means third, N shell means fourth like that. Okay? And then when electron in the atom when gets energy, it excited to the higher levels and when it is coming back it lose energy and come to the lower level. So, excitation and de excitation takes place when atom gets energy. So, atom when, when atom gets energy it excited from the lower level to higher level and then when it is coming back from higher level to lower level this process is called de excitation that means losing of energy. So, excitation and de excitation takes place with the absorption of energy and emitting of energy or losing of energy, right. So, the amount of energy that is lose uh, absorbed or lost is calculated with a simple equation that is delta E is equal to E 2 minus E 1. Okay. 
So, these are the important postulates of Bohr's model. In Bohr's model also, there are some drawbacks, right? First one, drawbacks. So, it can explain the spectrum of atoms with single electron, spectrum of atom with single electron, right. So, you know that the first element in the periodic table is hydrogen. So, hydrogen is associated with the one electron. So, that is why it can successfully explain the hydrogen spectrum, but it could not explain the atoms, the spectrum of atoms which are having more than one electron. That means, it could not explain the spectrum of helium, lithium, beryllium like that. Okay. So, it explained the simple spectrum of hydrogen right? and number 2. Whenever this spectrum is recorded in the presence of electric field or magnetic field, the spectral lines are further divided or further split into finer lines. So, this splitting of spectral lines, splitting of spectral lines could not be explained or cannot be explained by Bohr's model, right. So, these are generally called Zeeman effect and Stark effect. So, splitting of spectral lines in electric field is called Stark effect and the splitting of spectral lines in magnetic field is called Zeeman effect. So, these Stark and Zeeman effects are not explained by Bohr's model, right. So, there are drawbacks. So, again to explain these drawbacks, one more scientist called Sommerfeld came forward to, uh, to explain the model that is called Sommerfeld's model. So, in the next class, we will explain the Sommerfeld's model and also we will come across the quantum mechanical model and uh, we would discuss quantum numbers and uh, uh, quantum numbers which gives the complete address of the electrons and uh, how we can write the electronic configuration of the elements. So, the remaining part of the chapter I will be explained in the next uh, session. So, thank you and stay tuned to Bohr's.